Yo, this is crazy to me. Check this out. So I just sent this text. It has 100% emojis and it's mean to say I didn't catch the bus. Okay, maybe you need a little more information to understand that. But is this text using language? No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Are emojis a language? Well, first things first. Emoji is a Japanese word meaning E, picture, and moji, character. So when you say emoji, all you're really just saying is picture character. By the way, to clarify a character, go take a look at your keyboard. Most of the keys that you're looking at are a bunch of characters, just in case you didn't know. Now, let's look at what is a language. A language by definition is the use of complex communication, which is a common debate against why emojis aren't a language. For example, if I wanted to say, remember to always feed your curiosity, I can either make something very confusing using emojis or add English words to make it make more sense. But that will prevent emojis from being a language by our 21st century standards because it needs words from another language to be understood. Okay, so no, emojis aren't a language and that sucks. But what about Egyptian hieroglyphs? Those are pictures just like emojis. What separates emojis from hieroglyphs? Well, in order for us to understand this, we must first ask, what are hieroglyphs? And truthfully, I've done lots of research on it and it wasn't that easy for me to understand. So that's why I asked the linguistics professor at Bangor University and the leading emoji expert, Dr. Vivian Evans, to help me out here. Dr. Evans, what you got for me? So it's a visual representation. So it's a, a way of, of writing using pictorial symbols, basically. So it's like the Latin writing system that we use for, for English. We have a, a representation for the words of English using what was the Latin, the Roman Latin writing system. And hieroglyphs performed a similar function. That's why the analogy in some ways works with, with emojis, because they are representations of ideas, they're visual representations of ideas. But it's possible there are, there are languages that are purely visual. So there's a pictographic uh, language called Bliss Symbolics that was invented in the 20th century. And this is a, an actual language that is only made up of basically pictures with its own grammar system, with its own vocabulary, and it was developed for people who have difficulties with speech, and they're able to use this uh, pictographic language. To summarize, hieroglyphs were a writing system, or a way to visually communicate. Most people think that hieroglyphs are just pictures that try to show what's going on, but that's a little off from the truth. Something like hieroglyphs for us to compare to would be, believe it or not, but English. <laughs> Yes, hieroglyphs were that organized. Hieroglyphs use their characters to make up a whole alphabet and even some full words in some cases. Their characters were used as both verbal and physical visual communication. <sighs> this is probably a confusing sentence, but don't let it scare you. Take the word hair for example, H-A-I-R, the spelling Hair is four letters in the English alphabet, but when together they make the word hair. And the word hair is visual communication that acts as both the verbal hair and physical hair. This is how you visually communicate hair in hieroglyphs. And this is how you visually communicate hair in emojis. Well, not really, but that's why it's not right to compare emojis to hieroglyphs because emojis are more for adding tone and verbal cues to text, while hieroglyphs had actual meaning for their characters. And just in case you need a little more help understanding hieroglyphs, think about the money, percent, or ampersand symbol. They're all symbols that act as full words, currency, percentage, and and. Now picture seeing, think about your percentage of money and values you have written on a wall. You can fully understand it in English, even with 30% of the words being symbols. Hieroglyphs are a lot like this, but with much more symbols acting as words. Check out hieroglyphs.net if you want to learn more on the hieroglyph language. Interesting. So hieroglyphs acted as visual communication a lot like English, while emojis more so add meaning to text. That kind of makes sense. but. Do you not understand? I sent a full emoji text, man, and it was understood. 
how are emojis not a language? Okay, sure, with more and more emojis being added each year, it's becoming easier to write fully understandable emoji messages. But again, in order for emojis to become a language by our 21st century standards, it must be able to communicate complex communications using only emojis, and that means no other languages whatsoever. I can promise you, any full emoji message that you send will need some sort of context or other language, and if you don't believe me, try communicating with your friends using only emoji messages if you dare. It can be fun, but I find most of the time it's just a nightmare. Oh, Jesus man, chill out! Now, is it possible for emojis to someday become a language? Sure, I mean, anything is possible. But it's really important to note that hieroglyphs acted as alphabetical characters and even full words with some hieroglyphs. That'd be like changing each character on your keyboard with an emoji. And being able to understand that the heart eyes emojis equals to the letter capital H and the crying tears face equals to the letter lowercase i so that you can type them together and show hi. So, even if emojis were to become their own language someday, by the way that it's looking now, emojis still wouldn't even become close to hieroglyphs because we generally don't use emojis to replace our alphabetical characters and words. In fact, I believe that this new emoji language will be a universal language, like something that we've never seen before. That is, if it even ever gets there, of course. Ah, okay, that answers it. Until I can fully communicate using only emojis, emojis aren't a language. Understood. But there has to be a reason why emojis are so easily understood, right? Why are emojis so universal? Okay, I'm gonna communicate something to you using English text. Are you ready? I am sure that you understood what I meant by that, but did you understand how I was feeling? Did you feel that crazy amount of emotion coming from that sentence? No. Oh. Well, let's try another one. Did you feel it that time? That time it felt like going to her house was something I was not excited about, right? Well, good, because that's how I was feeling with that sentence. Let's try another one. And what about that one? Did that time it feel like I didn't want to go to her house for something that might be funny or embarrassing? Then I think you get the point. But let's just try one last one just for giggles. Now that one fully changes the meaning of the sentence because eye rolling with a smile is often seen as sarcasm. From a single emoji alone, the same exact text can have up to four or more different meanings, all thanks to the emotion that emojis add and doesn't add. And that is why emojis are very popular. Not to mention, emojis aren't only for one or two languages. Any language speaker or even voice disabled users can use and understand emojis because emojis are, for the most part, a universal way of communicating that can add to any text. Whoa, I've never really thought about that. Emojis can really change the way that we understand text, but why is that? Why are emojis so powerful? <laughs> Well, Dr. Evans? Language provides sort of the basic content of what we're saying, but the emotional expression, the personality of someone, um, the management of the, the discourse, that comes from these nonverbal cues. Now, in, if you think about that situation and compare it to digital communication, um, most of those cues are missing in digital communication because all you have is the text. Which is why when you get an email from someone, and you may have experienced this yourself, this is what I call the angry jerk phenomenon. You get an email from someone you know to be otherwise calm and say, not doesn't have to be an email, it can be a text message or whatever. You know that this person to be otherwise calm and sane, but they can come across as a complete angry jerk. And the problem is that text alone, especially short texts, SMSs and so on, 
um, strip out all the empathy. What's missing is all this other stuff that you have in spoken interaction, you know, the eye gaze, the, the pitch contour from the prosody, um, the gesture and, and, and so on. All of that is missing, so all the empathy is sucked out. And this is the role of emoji, it puts it back in. So emoji can add back in the nuancing, the tone of the message that's otherwise missing, that we get, you know, when we're talking face to face to one another, but it's completely missing in, in text speak. And that's the real value of emoji. And that's one of the reasons it's really mushroomed since 2011. Because of tone. When we speak in our native languages, it works a lot like the examples that I gave before. In fact, 65 to 70% of the stuff that we say have help from tone and visual cues that you may not have even realized. Here, let's try the same exact examples again, but this time, let's do them verbally. No, I don't want to go to her house. No, I don't want to go to her house. No, I don't want to go to her house. All of that extra info that she got with the verbal sentences are the tones and cues. And again, when we communicate using text, those cues are missing. We as humans naturally look for those tones and cues in communication. And that's where emojis become very powerful. I'd argue that the text with emojis and the verbal sentences are acting as the same exact thing. Without the emojis, you just have text where you're just not sure how- Okay, I get it. You're starting to repeat yourself. Emojis add tones and cues that are missing for normal conversation. Thanks, I only needed that first example. But my last question is, how did it get like this? Why were emojis created in the first place? Cut me off again. And we're gonna have some problems. Pissed emoji. Now, why were emojis created? Well, are you ready for me to repeat myself even more? Emojis were created to give more ways of expression over text. Maybe if you asked better questions, I wouldn't need to repeat myself so often. Anyways, let's take a look at the evolution of emojis. The most common origin story for emojis start with Professor Scott E. Fallman. On September 19th, 1982, Professor Fallman was having trouble being able to tell joke comments apart from serious comments on an online forum. And so, he posted this message. I propose that the following character sequence for joke markers, colon, hyphen, in parentheses. Read it sideways. Actually, it is probably more economical to mark things that are not jokes given current trends. For this, use colon hyphen start parentheses. And this was the first known use of sideway emoticons. But even then, a 1967 issue of Reader's Digest records the use of this emoji, long hyphen in parentheses, which is meant to act as a tongue in cheek or trying not to laugh, meaning. Now, I know what you're probably saying. Emoticons and emojis are different. Well, I mean, yeah, but I'd like to argue that emoticons were actually ancestors to emojis. And here's why. In 1986, thanks to a standard abbreviated as ASCII, or American Standard Code for Information Interchange, made it possible for what's known as ASCII art, and which started a new phenomenon of Japanese-style emoticons, or what's called kalmojis in Japan. What made Kalmojis new is that you didn't have to read them sideways, and it had a lot more ways to express. However, in 1995, a company called Tokomo, who were selling pages at the time, added a heart symbol to their products, making their pages very popular against other pagers. Without understanding the demand of the heart symbol, they removed the heart symbol and lost a lot of their users. In 1999, however, project lead Shigetaka Karita at Dokomo created and added emojis to one of their new products. Karita's goal was to make characters easier to use over the popular cowmojis out at the time, which most of the time took forever to type on mobile and needed more than one character. And so, picture characters, or emojis, were born. But the first emojis were not what you'd probably expect. The first emojis released were very basic and simple, and were actually drawn by Karita himself, though he really wanted a more skilled artist to do the final art. 
It wasn't until 2010 that the list of emojis that you know today were released. In 2010, 608 new emoji characters were added to Unicode 6.0. Wait, Unicode, this is really important. So Unicode is the universal code standard for plain text that just about anything that can type a character follows. And it has just about all the world's languages. And it was in 2010 that the emojis that you know and love today became official within the Unicode standard by adding many emojis that were huge in Japan at the time. But I wanna make sure that you really understand that Unicode is not a font. No, 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 no. Think of it more like a map. 0048 8 will always be a capital English H, and 0069 will always be a lowercase English I. So when you hit those keys on your keyboard, Unicode is reading it as U plus 0048 U plus 0069, displaying hi. In fact, you can demonstrate this yourself. Open up Microsoft Word and type this in 30AF space 30C3 space 30AD space 30FC. Now, go to the end of each of the four character combos and press Alt X. And what you'll have is the Japanese kanji word on my hat, cookie. You don't even have a Japanese keyboard and yet you're still able to type in Japanese simply by knowing the codes and Unicode. And the codes are posted all over the internet, so go look a couple of them up and have some fun, why don't you? Okay, this is longer than I want it to be. Back to the voiceover. Peace. All thanks to the Unicode Consortium, made up of board members from Apple, Adobe, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and much more. But truthfully, its universal reach is really all thanks to Apple for adding emojis on their iPhone in 2011. Emojis started to become a worldwide phenomenon with more than 70 million iPhones sold worldwide, and not to mention other devices and social networks adding emojis as well. Now, the Unicode Consortium are adding anywhere from 60 new emojis a year. That is why emojis are so universal. And that is why emojis are so powerful. Most interesting. You know, I gotta say that I learned a lot today. I didn't know that emojis had such a rich long history of evolution dating as far back as 1967. It makes sense why emojis aren't a language, because I mean, there's no real demand for a new language at the moment. Maybe some event or invention in the future will cause for that demand, but at the moment, it's just kind of like, what's the point, right? However, there's always been demand to fill the missing tone and cues since the beginning of text, which has led us to the wonderful list of emojis that you know and love today. <laughs> Crying Jordan face and all. Man, you've got to love a good evolution story. Hats off to emojis for sure. <laughs> But today, I have one simple question for you. Do emojis help you understand text better? Cast your vote by clicking that question on screen. It should be in the top right corner and it now shows live updates. And if you're on mobile, feel free to weigh in in the chat section. I left a secret Unicode message in the description and let's have some fun and see if you guys can crack it. And if you do, post the secret message in the chat section as well. Lastly, I hope you guys found something curious about emojis today, but whatever the case may be, remember to always feed your curiosity.